How does the person respond to a, a, a hardcore agnostic or a radical skeptic who uh, just, uh, uh, just rejects all religious claims uh, out of hand and refuses to make any commitments about, about anything in the religious or metaphysical realm? Well, the quick response that comes to mind is that uh, the problem of that kind of skeptic is they're not skeptical enough. Um, or to put it another way, they're not skeptical of their skepticism. You see, skepticism is a point of view. It isn't just a nowhere land that you happen to be because you can't figure things out. Agnosticism is, of course, uh, the point that you don't know uh, what the answer is, and that could be of two sorts actually of three sorts. You don't know because you've never asked the question and you haven't looked at the evidence and that might be one reason that you don't know and you don't care. I mean there are lots of things I'm agnostic about that you know uh, what is the best rugby team in Australia? I don't know. Um, have no idea and I don't care. So I am agnostic about that but it's not an important issue at least to me and uh, consequently I don't worry about that too much. Uh, it might be that somebody's agnostic because they've examined the issues carefully and they find that there is a tie between either side and therefore they can't decide on, under the present system of rules or information they actually have. It might be, however, that they are skeptical of religion because, or agnostic because they think not only do they not know, but it is not possible to know. Nobody can know the answer to those kinds of things. Now, this is a very different point of view than the others, because this is actually a, a very aggressive statement about the nature of knowledge. We are, and in that case, they're not skeptical. I mean, there's a healthy skepticism that's appropriate where you want to have proper justification for the things that people believe, and if there are outlandish claims that are being made, uh, it's good to be skeptical until you have evidence adequate to justify that particular claim. But we're talking about skeptics now that are quite different. They're not skeptical of their own skepticism. They have exalted skepticism. That is, this idea that they are not going to accept any kind of religious claim whatsoever. They call it skepticism, but they're not skeptical. They are convinced that religious claims are false. And they are not skeptical of their own view. They are not asking, I, I think, deep questions about why they think they're false and what their underlying presuppositions happen to be, like materialism, maybe, or naturalism, and ask what justifies their materialism or their naturalism, I don't think they're asking those kinds of questions. I've listened to enough of them to know that this isn't what's going on. And so most of the times when you have hardcore skeptics, they haven't been skeptical of their own skepticism. They haven't justified their skepticism with good reasons. And this might be a challenge you make to them. You might ask them, by the way, what kind of agnostic are you? Are you an agnostic who says you just don't know yet, but you're open to the evidence on either side? Or are you an agnostic who says, I don't know, and nobody else knows either because no one can know about this circumstance? And so if it's the first, I'd want to know, well, then tell me what pros and cons have you listened to that sounded compelling that bring you to kind of an even Stephen balance on these evidences, just curious. And so what do you mean by that kind of question? You're drawing the person out. You're getting them to talk about it. I wonder sometimes if they've actually, in circumstances like that, they've actually done the weighing. You're going to ask them about that. If they say, no, they're this other kind of skeptic, now they've made a radical claim about knowledge. You can't know about this. No one can know. Well, why would they think that? How do they come to that conclusion? So now you have a Columbo number two question. And it's an important and valuable question at that point. Let them tell you. If they don't have good reasons for saying that, and frankly, I can't think of any good reasons for saying that. I can think of reasons people have come up with, but they're not good ones. If they don't have good reasons to say that, then chances are they have not been skeptical enough with their own skepticism. So the problem with radical skeptics ironically, is that they're just not skeptical enough. They should turn their skeptical gaze on their own skepticism and be sure that they are capable of justifying their own skepticism, skepticism and are not just naysayers 
of all deniers of all religious claims. There's got to be good reasons for that too, if you're going to be intellectually honest. 